Hi, I'm Michael Raven. I'm a young entrepreneur. Um, I have two other brothers and I have two loving parents. I own a social media marketing agency called Peak Marketing along with my father. I joined Future Fortune Builders in 2019 and I'm also partners with my dad in our REI company called Synergy Home Solutions Group. In addition to that, I also edit property tour videos for a local commercial brokerage in my area. Um, fun fact, I'm also bilingual, which means I can speak two languages. My other language is Russian. So the topics we're going to be going over today are Facebook page tips and tricks, Facebook lead generation methods, helpful softwares for your business to ease your business, and what to post on Facebook. So as you guys know, online presence is super important. Online presence will help you market your business, uh, give you credibility, and also expand your network. And today we're going to be only focusing on Facebook. And coming in, JJ said that this is a Facebook 202, and it really is. We're not really going to be going over how to set up a Facebook page, stuff like that. So we will be covering those in uh, later sessions. But I expect uh, you guys already have Facebook pages and stuff like that. So other than that, uh, we can move on. So what can you post on your social media? All right. So you have a, a Facebook page and you're stuck. You don't know what to post. All right. So there are a bunch of things you can post on there. So the first one is promote your blog. So on your website, I'm sure some of you guys are posting blogs. So this is a great way for you to drive traffic to your website by posting blogs, as you can see on the left. So that's uh, the first thing you can post. The second thing is business news. Any project uh, you're doing, you can post. This is a great opportunity. This gets you a lot of engagement. So this is actually a rental we had and we put on social media, uh, like what, what should we put as a rental? So we found these two other properties in the same neighborhood that were nicely done. So we gathered the two images and this is the property that we already, that uh, uh, we demoed and we're f uh, full gut. So we asked them, uh, which kitchen would you prefer to put in a rental? Um, and this got a bunch of engagement. So this is um, a type of post you can do. Again, this is mainly if you have projects going on or if you're visiting uh, and looking at properties. So this is a good um, post you can do. Another one is community service or personal activities. So over here on the right, I have my friend, Rachel Schwartz. If you don't know her, she's amazing. She handles uh, with Canva and she's good with that. So if you guys uh, need help with Canva, she's your girl. So basically any personal activities, community service you guys are doing, uh, just post on Facebook, honestly. It, it, it's great, great engagement. It makes your page unique instead of posting um, what everybody else posts, like these inspirational facts and stuff. Yeah, so basically anything you're doing, see Rachel was going skiing with her dog. So this was a great opportunity for her to post on Facebook. I just screenshotted this. Um, I'm not, I'm, I have no idea who these people are, but it looks like they're doing some community service. So this is also a great opportunity to post on your Facebook page. Just, if I'm going too fast, guys, just stop me. Um, I can go back and review them. But other than that, let's move on to the next one. So the next one, we have inspirational type of posts, memes, and factual posts. These are the, the generic posts that you're probably gonna be posting if you don't have anything else to post. So basically you can create these posts in Canva. As I said, inspirational memes, factual posts, these are generic posts that everybody posts. But again, when, as I said, if you don't have any projects going on, if you don't really wanna, if you're, if you're stuck at home, you have no, nothing to post, then these are, these are your go-to. These bring pretty good engagement. I would say, and you have to be watch out for how many words are on the screen or else it, no one's just going to, no one's going to read it. And it's just going to get low engagement. Okay. So for the last one, we have infographic posts. These are a great, great way to provide information. And it's also a nice visual infographic posts will usually end up, you'll probably end up getting a freelancer or someone on Fiverr to make these for you. So like, let's say you had a blog, five steps to sell your house or this one uh, tips to become wealthy. Uh, real estate investors. So you would get someone on Fiverr, a freelancer to create this for you. I actually created this on um, Canva. So that just shows you how useful Canva is. And yeah, and on the left, I'm pretty sure Linda, she's hosting the internet quick start. She posts this basically just statistics of her market in Austin. So this is also a great post you can do. And yeah, that pretty much concludes 
what you can post on your social media. These are really the main ones. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. All right. So now we're going to be talking about how to get inbound leads from buy and sell groups. All right, let's start. So if you guys don't know what buy and sell groups are, they're basically groups where people can buy and sell things. So basically what you want to do, first thing you want to do is you want to find these groups. So basically what you want to do is you just want to search up on groups. And I'm going to give a live uh, example um, after I review this. So basically just search up your local area, buy and sell. So as you can see, we have all these results. We have Bricktown, buy and sell. So you can just join these groups. They, they're, they're public. So uh, you should get in. Next, what you want to do is you want to create a list of the groups you're in and the days you can post. So usually with these buy and sell groups, they allow you to promote your business. So what you want to do is you want to write down the dates when you can promote your business. So this is just a little like um, example. We didn't fill out all of them, but this just shows you like uh, how to set it up basically. So once you have your groups and when you can post, now all you have to do is just post on each buy and sell groups at the time they allow you. If you don't do it, if you don't follow their guidelines, you're just going to get kicked out. Not a big deal, but uh, you should follow their community guidelines. And then you would just post, are you tired landlord? This is some generic text. You don't have to copy this, but are you a tired landlord? Do you have any houses in your portfolio you want to sell ASAP? We buy any condition on your timeline, PM for details. So it's just a simple post. And then from that, you should be able to get some inbound leads. Some people say, hey, I have a property that I'm looking to sell. Are you interested? And then from there, uh, try to make a deal. So now, uh, and the last step is basically just to rinse and repeat, do it again. So now I'm going to show you guys an example. This is a local group of ours. There's a good amount of people, 22K. This is how you check um, to see where you can post and when you can post. So once you get in, in the group, you go to about. And generally, whenever you um, request to be, to be in a group, they'll give you some community guidelines. So if you see there is no promotion, um, don't, don't waste your time. Just um, either cancel the request. Or, um, or you can just join the group uh, if you want. But basically, you go to about, and they sh and you have to scroll um, down. And now you have group rules from the admins. So um, I saw this over here, so business posts. So as you can see, it says local business posts once every seven days with proper credentials. So that doesn't fit our uh, characteristic. And then it says direct sales slash travel ads are on Wednesdays only which we don't apply to. And then the last one, real estate on weekends. So this means that we can post any real estate related stuff on the weekends and today is Saturday. So I'm actually going to post today. So once you see that you can post today, what you do is you go to discussion and then all you do is you, uh, over here, you should see um, what's on your mind. Uh, uh, and then you just press that. Now all you have to do is just write your text and then post it. That's pretty much it. So I'm just going to do, are you a tired landlord? Do you have any, oh wait, do you have houses in your portfolio you want to sell a SAP? Oops. We buy any condition on your time plan. Um, and then PM for details. And again, you guys can cu customize this to your, uh, your needs. It's, it should be a simple text. Try not to make it too like cheesy and say like, Cash has I mean, ca cash for house fast now, but like uh, don't don't try to make it too cheesy. So this is just an example text. You don't have to use it, but basically now all I have to do is just post it, and uh, hopefully out of the uh, twenty three thousand people, uh, someone will say I, I I need to sell my house, something like that, uh, and that's where the inbound leads come in. So does anybody have any questions on um, this campaign? Just a simple recap. So basically what you want to do is find um, buy and sell groups by searching up your local area, then buy and sell. 
it doesn't have to say buy and sell in the name. Online yard sale is also um, something uh, you can join. It's uh, pretty much the same thing. You just need to check when you can post. So then create create a list of the buy and sell groups and when you can post. This is a good uh, task for VAs to do. We currently have our VAs doing this. Uh, so it's a good task uh, for them to do. So now moving on, we're going to look at outbound leads in Facebook Marketplace. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the um, uh, Facebook Marketplace uh, that Fortune Builders um, teaches about how to find um, properties on. I'm just going to go over a quick recap. Before I start, do you guys have any questions on the first two topics? I'm going to give a live example of this one as well. Um, you guys are probably familiar with this. Fortune Builders talks about this all the time. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to go to Facebook Marketplace. The two categories we're going to be looking at today is property rentals and home sales. So the difference between property rentals is that property rentals actually has a map. Um, and I'll show you guys later but it has a map of all the properties and where it's located. So if you guys are looking at specific locations, you guys can move zoom in and see all the rentals that are being that all the listings that are in that location. Home sales is exactly what you see here. It's just um, a list of properties. So now what you want to do after you go there um, either, or I, I went to um, home sales is you want to find distressed properties on Facebook Marketplace. I found this property over here. Um, I'm not really sure what's, the pr what's up with the price, but it looks like someone was trying to rehab it, stopped halfway. It looks interesting. Now what? So once you find a distressed property, you want to look at the listing. So generally, you only want to contact the listing, whether it's an owner or agent. Large companies, I'm not sure what you guys have in your area, but I'm pretty sure Zumper if you want to write it down, Zumper is a popular um, company, especially on the West Coast. Uh, they basically list the properties and it's almost impossible to get a hold of them. So as, as nice as the, uh, like as the stress as the property might seem, if it's listed by a, like a large company, I think in our area, we have like Rental Beast or something. Whenever you try to contact them, it, it's, it's really hard to get a contact, to get a message back. So there's just no point of, like contacting them. I'll show you guys how to see if it's an agent or uh, a, an owner or a wholesaler. Um, okay. If you guys are doing wholesaling, you wouldn't be contacting properties from wholesalers. But if you're like rehabbing and stuff like that, it might interest you. So uh, it really depends on what you want. So once you see, I think this person was a owner. So I think once you find a property, um, it's an owner or an agent or a wholesaler if you're looking to rehab. What you want to do is you want to send them a text message and then they'll see it and then hopefully they'll respond. And I just want to show you guys property rentals. This is how it looks like. Um, as you can see, you have a map. Uh, whereas over here, if you go to home sales, it's just a list. Okay. Um, so as you can see, these, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to see if it's a realtor or for sale by owner. So I'm pretty sure these people are uh, agents. So if you go scroll down to seller information, and if you press on them, you can see what um, they have on Facebook Marketplace. So can, as you can see, this person has a lot of listings, which indicates that they are an agent. An agent. So it sucks that this this property is, doesn't have any photos, but I'm pretty sure this is. It looks from the outside, it looks dated, probably from the inside. So maybe I would give the shot for this. Now we use a different text, a different outreach um, text for agents and for sale by owners, because typically agents have many listings. So we ask them, hi, I'm, I'm, um, I'm an investor in the area. Do you have any properties I should be making offers on? So whereas for sale by owners, you would just say, I think we have a script over here in the presentation. I'll just use again. Hello, my team is looking to purchase some properties for an uh, investment during the shutdown. Are you the owner or something like that? Let's see. All right. So let's find a property real quick. Let's see. So the driveway looks cracked. There is no other photos. Let's look at the owner. So this guy may look like a, looks like a wholesaler. Now, generally, I wouldn't go for wholesalers because um, we're wholesalers ourselves. But let's try to look at property rentals. So basically for property rentals, since they're renting, you just want to ask them, are you um, looking to sell? All right. So okay. 
the a lot typically a lot of people especially uh those who are renting out a room are in um distress because probably from the pandemic they're in distress because they need to rent out a room so they can get more um cash flow so that so usually whenever there's a listing for a room for rent you definitely want to uh, jump on those because that really indicates that the person's in stre- in distress and stuff like that so let's try to find property um, a lot of these look like apartment complexes. Uh, and actually, if you go down here, you can just choose houses for rent, townhouses for rent. Um, we usually do houses or townhouses for rent. I'm going to look at houses. And whenever you press on houses for rent, it brings you back to the list for some reason. So not sure why. Um, but let's look at this one. Doesn't look that doesn't look dated. I don't know. It could take me a while to find a property, but I want to try to find one with Zumper or a big uh, company that is okay. listing it. So if we go here. All right. So it looks like this one is actually a room for rent. $650 a month. Uh, let's see. Room Rooms for rent ranging from 650 and up. So this really does show that the owners are distressed because they're looking for that additional like money and uh, capital. It doesn't really look dated from the inside, but let's say it was. So let's check. So is this the owner? So as you can see, they only have one listing, which indicates that they are the owner. Typically wholesalers and agents, they have multiple listings. So we can see that this is the owner. So if it was dated, then we would just reach out to them. Um, And I think, I think we already, I think I reached out to this property again. You see message again. Um, I already messaged this property. So let's try to find one that's listed by a big company. All right. So here you see Rental Beast. Um, this mm-hmm. is our local company. As you can see, you don't have that send message option. You have that contact message where you have to give email, phone, well, phone numbers, okay. option, email. Um, so it, it's really, it's, it's, it's more of a headache than it is uh, easy to handle with. So yeah, that even though like this property looks... It's not that dated, but um, even if the property is distressed, at least Fortune Builder says to typically not go for those. So now we're going to move on to helpful softwares for your business. These are all free software, so you don't have to worry about any expenses. These softwares we use in our business, so they're very helpful. First is Lead Connect. So basically, in short terms, it's called LinkedIn Network Automation. So basically what it does you can create automated sequences. I'll, I'll show you an example right now. What it does is you can set up who you want to net, um, network with. And then this software will automatically start sending friend requests with people on LinkedIn. And they will also be sending a connection message. And this will this goes on every day. The free version, you can do five requests every day and up to 15 messages every day. So here's some just stats. Um, if you guys want to write it down, it's called Lead Connect. Great software. We use it in general. Um, I, I, I can't remember the last time I checked on it because we've uh, had it running for a while. Um, we've been adding wholesalers, realtors, and real estate investors, stuff like that. And it just goes on, does its stuff. You'll get a bunch of notifications of people um, replying back. And you can, also, you can also set up sequences to reply back to people but that will just get rid of your messages very quickly. So we typically just have it for friend, for, for friend requests. And let's say we want to contact realtors. So search up realtors. I'm trying to filter by location so that I'm only adding realtors in my location. All right, locations. So I'm going to add New Jersey. Mm-hmm. So now this should give you all the... Um, the searches for um, New Jersey. So I'm going to go on people. So now these are all the people more sent. That's in New Jersey. Um, so now we have our list of people. So what we do is we would copy this. And I think I have, there's a program that um, And basically what you would do is you would go your sequences. Um, now I don't have a, this is a test account. Um, I don't have any sequences. Maybe I can create a new one real quick to, just to show you guys. Name it friend requests, first degree mountain. I think we're good on that. Um, the LinkedIn search URL. So we want to copy and paste this. So basically it'll take all the contact, all the, um, 
the users from that um, search and start sending friend requests basically. And it's, it's, it's really amazing. You just have, honestly just set it up and forget about it. And it'll do that for until you, until it dies, until your computer dies. So it, it's honestly a great um, software. You can set up what messages you want to send, how long. You can also do follow-up messages. So let's say they didn't respond so you can send another message and you can select when you want to send it so it's it's a it's a great software do, do you guys have any any more questions on this uh the second one is called remove bg i actually found the software via my school my school said if you need to get rid of background it's called remove bg it's on the screen um so basically what it does it, it removes background from images i think a lot of people have this problem it's it's a really annoying problem um, and this does it for free and unlimited usage, tons of backgrounds, as you can see. And it's compatible with Mac, Windows, uh, Linux. So you need to worry about what uh, computer you're using. And I'm pretty sure they also have a feature now where you can remove background from images, I mean, from videos. Um, so that's also a cool thing. I haven't used it on like people. So basically it, it's mainly for like logos and other like, um, like simple colored photos. All right, so the next helpful software that we're gonna review is Canva. Um, as you guys already know, Canva is basically a content creation tool. It's completely free, um, has over like 20, 250,000 templates to choose from, um, unlimited usage, uh, 100 plus designs with like uh, type of text and um, all these animations. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys a little crash course on Canva. So I'm just gonna share my screen and show you guys what it's all about. All right, let's go to canva.com. Canva.com. And the nice thing about this is that Canva actually has teams. So if you guys are working with any teams or VAs, you can invite them to see your work, which is really amazing. So you guys can work on the same stuff, share, the, share your content. So let's just create a design. Let's create an Instagram post. There we go. All right, um, I'm just gonna do some motivational quote. Let's see, so actually over here, it already has a template. So if you want, you can just do this, but I'm gonna show you guys how to create it from scratch. So let's just get rid of everything here. Um, so over here, we, we have our toolbar. Um, so basically Canva gives you a bunch of stock photos. Um, these are all free to use, so you can post, do whatever you'd like with them. Over here, we have elements. These are just some uh, graphic animations, stuff like that, some more visuals. These are really good. We have some frames where you can put your logo, so I'm just going to put this here. And then you can upload a bunch of content that you have. I have a bunch of random things, but I'm going to choose this. And now we have our logo that we put right into this frame. In addition, it also has a bunch of text, so it has this cool glowing text. There's a, there's a bunch of cool things you can do with this. I'm just going to delete that. And over here, if you're planning to do a video, um, you can, there's a bunch of music. Music is usually, there's not much, much of a choice. Um, as you can see, a lot of these crown ones are for Canva Pro, and a bunch of the photos are also. So let's say you want to do a house. See these crowns, they, they, you have to pay for them. And now what you can do is if you press on them, if you, if you want to um, use this photo, a specific photo, what you can do is you can pay for that photo. Oh, nice. Now, um, we actually paid one time and I think it was only a dollar. So it's, it's pretty in, inexpensive. But as I said, there are a bunch of really nice free photos you can use. So you don't always have to pay for them. But that, that's just something else. It also has videos. Typically, videos are more for Canva Pro because they don't have that many options. Let's search up houses. Yeah, they, they don't really have that many options, but it has videos, backgrounds, and folders. If you want to save it to um, a folder and then share it with your team, that's also applicable. Here, let's quickly put a house, make something nice. So you can make it bigger with this. And the nice thing is that there's actually Canva mobile. So you can install the mobile app. And in general, all you can do is just create a post from your phone in general and just post if let's say you're going on vacation create a canva on your like install canva on your phone and then you can create a post from there and um post it on facebook instagram linkedin whatever you want basically and now if you want to create it a if you want to create a video 
out of a picture, which you can do, which is nice that they uh, recently added, is called Animate. So basically, it'll automatically animate the video. So it'll have the text doing something. And if you have another page, let's add, let's add this house. Let's maximize it. So if you, if you press the play button, you can see you have this. And then it should switch right about now. So you can make a bunch of cool videos like that. I know uh, I, I can actually show you guys an example on our Instagram of a video we did from our recent rental. Let's go to profile. So you can see we have this cool animated video, fully renovated, stuff like that. So yeah, and I think we had another one that showed the kitchen. Yeah, so here we have, um, which is about a co combination and we have a bunch of uh, combinations here. This is from the um, renovated rental. And then we have this. So it's it's really amazing. And this, and this was all used by Canva. It just shows you what you can do um, with it. As I said, I'm just going to do a crash course. If you guys want to learn more about it, I would uh, recommend contacting Rachel Swartz. She, she's really good with graphic animation. And then over here, you just have some more tools, adjusting the colors, um, cropping the photos. You can also make it, um, you can choose how opaque you want it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And you, you can also download it um, as a video, you can do a PNG. And the thing is, it, this is not only for like Instagram posts. They, you can also do it for, let's see. I know you can do it for a bunch of other, like um, a business card. Let's see what else you can do. You can do, you can do a photo collage. You can do a resume, a flyer. I thought they also had some branded stuff. So you can do like maybe a shirt. I need to check. Maybe if we do it over here, can turn it to a GIF. Let's see what else. See, you can print it on t-shirt. So what, exactly whatever I just did there, uh, they can send it to me as a shirt. So there are many um, cool features. Again, this is just a crash course. So let's move on. Does anybody have any questions on Canva? All right, sounds like we're good. So Canva is our content creation tool. I'm just gonna switch back to the presentation for now. Now the final tool is Zapier. Zapier is probably one of my favorite tools to use. It's basically an automation slash integration tool. Zapier um, integrates with almost like every software. It, 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 it's really a widespread of softwares where you can basically automate. So let's say, um, I'll, I'll, give you the, I'll, I'll do an example. Um, now, but let's say you had um, a Google form and you had a bunch of responses and you wanted to move to, let's say you wanted, you wanted to get an, uh, an email notification every time someone, um, someone filled out the form. So basically what you would do is you would create an automation where whenever someone submits a Google form, you would get an email notification which is really nice. So, and there's also, there's millions of um, automations and I'll do one right now. Um, so this is free so uh, software. The free version has five automation sequences you can create and about a hundred tasks per month you can do. Now I would definitely recommend looking into Zapier because it can automate your business in so many ways. I, I can't even tell you, we, I know we use it in our business. You can use it for um, automating your social media uploads. So let's say if you post something to Facebook, you can make it so that it'll also post to LinkedIn. So there's just a widespread of varieties. I'll, I'll create a, um, an example right now. I'll create a, um, a Zapier integration. So let's switch screens. All right, let's go to zapier.com, zapier. All right, so I wanna, I wanna, I want one of you guys to create a, help me create a Zapier. So let's go here. So. What are some of the softwares you guys use in your business? Um, I think, let's say, over here. What are, what, are, what are some of the softwares you guys use in your business? Let's see if uh, Zapier can automate something for you. Just shout it out. Facebook, of course. Facebook. All right. Let's go to Facebook. Facebook. So we have a Facebook page. Or we can also do Messenger. So let's use Facebook page. So what we can do, um, there's, a, it gives you a bunch of templates you can use. So share a new Facebook uh, page post to LinkedIn. We have share new posts um, on your Facebook page to another Facebook page. 
we have you can share to your Twitter. Let's let's see. Maybe let let's try Google Form. Let's say you have one of your buyers lists, and someone fills out your Google Form. Let me move this. And let me get rid of that. All right. Now you guys see. So over here, um, it, send email via Gmail for new Google Form submission. So whenever someone fills out a Google Form, maybe um, using Google Form as your buyers list, and you see that and someone fills it out, then you will get an email notification saying, um, hey, someone filled out uh, this form, all right? Um, and you can also use it for your G uh, Google Calendar. And um, this also integrates with, uh, the only thing that it doesn't integrate with um, is RealFlow, and of course, a bunch of other um, softwares, but it doesn't integrate with RealFlow, um, which sucks, um, but it is what it is. Um, let's see what else. What else do we want to automate? So does that also do Instagram? Yes, Instagram. So let's search up Instagram. Oh. Um, Instagram. Okay. Share a new post from Instagram um, to your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Share Instagram photos to Twitter automatically. Pin your new Instagram posts on Pinterest. Um, Slack is a communication software. Um, save your Instagram photos to a Google Drive. So it basically automates that whole process for you. And if you use it correctly, um, Zapier can save you a lot of time in which it can replace, typically it can replace a whole VA for you because it can save you so much time, um, like 20 hours a week, it'll save for you. And um, I think you guys would much rather pay $20 a month than pay $150 a week for the same amount of time saved. So it, it's it's um wor it's well worth it I would say so yeah this is just an integration automation software um it um it integrates with email uh, CRMs email um softwares um so yeah Zapier is great um we'll definitely create an, uh, we'll definitely do another session on Zapier because Zapier has a lot to offer as well all right so that concludes um my deal with softwares. Um, so now just a, a little bit of Facebook tips and tricks. Um, these are kind of scattered out. Um, so the first one we have is fa Facebook page reviews. Um, now in your Facebook page, reviews are pretty much essential. Um, any lead or that, that you have will go to your website or your Facebook page to see reviews and testimonials. So it's crucial that you have um, reviews. Um, so what a lot of people do, and I'm sure you guys, some of you guys have also done this, um, is you want to reach out to your local art um, uh, mastery students um, and basically just write them a review. And typically what I do, um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys also do that, um, you put it in your notes somewhere, uh, a template of the message you want to write as a review and then have these um, little personalized fields. So um, let's say... I wanted to do uh, Kathy's, uh, I wanted to write a review for Kathy. So Kathy and her, um, Kathy, Kathy, what's your um, REI company called? What is my what, I'm sorry? W what is your um, real estate investing company called? Framing Properties. All right, so Kathy and, framing pro uh, and the Framing Properties team is extremely knowledgeable, professional, and experienced. From the very beginning, we were impressed with the quality of time, effort, and energy taken to help us. I highly recommend uh, Framing uh, Properties. Is, is that it? Yes. Yeah, uh, you will not be disappointed. Um, now, I would, I would generally um, give, give reviews to people you have talked to and people that you're closer with. Um, so like Sevlin and I, um, I, I know I gave a review to Sevlin. Um, uh, so, um, and then after that, after you give the review to the person, just give them a little heads up. Hey, um, I gave her, I gave you a review. I'd appreciate if you could give, write me one back. Um, and then you just have that little link so that they can go straight to your reviews. Um, so that, that's just, that's just going to help you get a lot of more reviews. And actually I saw yesterday or the day before, um, uh, Ronald, he actually posted on the RI mastermind group and he said, um, he's trying to build his business credibility, um, stuff like that. So he said, uh, I'd appreciate if you can review us on Google. Um, now I don't know if you guys are aware that on Google, you can create a Google business so that whenever people Google your business, 
um, it will give some information about you. I know, I think, I think our, comp I think Synergy Home Solutions Group, we set up ours. Um, I'll, show you, I'll show you guys in a second. Um, but basically he asked people to review us on Google and he'll give a, uh, give a review back. So that's also another strategy that I didn't even think of until yesterday um, you could do. So just post on the REI Mastermind. I'm looking to uh, expand my reviews. Um, I'll, re I'll leave a review back if you um, review my page. Um, so you can do that. Um, try not to overload the, ma the REI Mastermind group with that. Um, try to look for um, uh, people who have already posted that type of stuff and join in. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna show you guys how this um, Google business looks like. Yeah, um, my, my dad set this up. Um, I, I don't really have an experience on this, but this is how it looks like. Um, it, it makes it more professional, I think. Um, so yeah, and you can also have reviews on this. So this is what Ronald was trying to do. Um, and I think it's a very smart idea. So you guys should definitely check on doing that. Um, so trying to get reviews on your Facebook and your Google, all right? I think mainly people will go to your Google. So it's, it's, it's essential that you have it on your Google as well. So I just wanted to show you guys how to share content again. Um, this is a very important uh, step if you want to get a lot of engagement and reach. Um, so sharing to your groups is very important. Um, a lot of people forget how to do it or don't know how to do it. And it's a bummer because you can get a lot of engagement from it. Um, so basically I have just a couple pictures here and I'll, and if you guys need, I'll, um, do it live. I'll, I'll do an example. Um, but basically whenever you po first post, um, something on your, uh, Facebook page, what you want to do is you want to press, um, this little profile icon. And what this shows is that you're currently on your, uh, Facebook page. What you want to do is you want to go to your account. So our, uh, uh, Facebook personal business account is called Ella Holmes. Um, Ella is my mom, by the way. It's not some random lady. Um, uh, so what you want to do is you want to go to your personal business account. And whenever you go to your personal business, you, the reason why you want to go to your personal business account is because all the groups that you're in are mainly on your personal business account. You, you normally don't, you don't have that many groups on your uh, Facebook page. Um, which is why you don't want to uh, share this content on your Facebook page. So once you press your, uh, once you press this little icon and this pops up, you want to press on your personal um, Facebook account. And then what you want to do is you want to press this share button and then you want to press share to a group. After that, this should pop up. And what I would do is I would copy the description of the post um, that you already posted. So on your Facebook page, page whenever you, whenever you're um, trying to share a post copy the description first so that whenever you're sharing it you put this you put the same text so as you can see this is the description of the post and I just copied it because um, whenever you're sharing it um, uh, the description um, here is a lot bigger than the description down here so that's why you want to copy it um, to this. And then after that, all you, all you really have to do is just share to the um, groups you want. Of course, share it to relative, uh, like related groups. Don't share it to like fishing gr uh, Facebook group or st stuff like that. You want to share it to real estate related groups. Um, yeah, share it to about, um, I don't know, you can share it to 10 to 14. The more, the more groups you share to, the higher your reach engagement will be. But the only thing I would say, and JJ definitely knows this, don't share it to too many groups or else Facebook will put you in jail, in a virtual jail, and you cannot uh, access your Facebook account. You, um, I think, I'm not sure uh, what you're really restricted to, but JJ definitely knows. Now the next tip, Facebook page insights. So, um, it, on your Facebook page, you have many different options, and one of them is insights. So I actually screenshot this from uh, Linda um, uh, she, in the Internet Quick Start. Um, so basically, this just tells you how your posts are doing engagement-wise. Um, as you can see, she is getting a lot of uh, reach um, and a lot of engagement. So I'm just going to show you guys how to find this. Um, it's a great tool to just show you, like, KPIs, um, stuff like that. Um, so... Let me share my screen again. All right, so go to your Facebook page. 
and over here you have a bunch of tools in th this huge toolbar. Um, over here you should see insights. And then once this loads, it'll give you a bunch of um, statistics, numbers, uh, percentages, stuff like that. This will basically just give you a good idea of um, what posts are doing well. So maybe like uh, Motivational Monday is really your strong point um, or your Funny Friday or if you're posting infographic um, content or if you're posting um, property updates or videos. So it's, it's just to give you a good idea and understanding. And then um, once you see what works, you can start posting more of that. Um, so yeah, this is just a good idea. Um, it gives you a good idea um, and it gives you some nice numbers to look at. Um, so that's fa Facebook page insights. And there are a bunch of um, different um, tabs on the, on the face on the Facebook page um, toolbar. Um, I, I would definitely try to look over them. Um, some of them are very helpful. All right, um, over here, um, as, as I said, JJ already mentioned this, no politics, and I would reside to no religion. Um, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't try to dedicate most of your posts to religion um, because people want to see more your professional side and um, what, what you're doing with your business. Um, so just try to avoid politics and religion. Um, it really kind of just like puts a line in between your audience. So half will like it, half won't like it. As I said, JJ will not accept anyone in this group that's posting politics. So politics is definitely uh, across and don't ever post about that. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Um, let's just go to the next one. Um, so Facebook engagement. Um, this is a pretty popular one that JJ also talks about. So in the Facebook algorithm, you get certain points for uh, how you engage with other people's content. And in general, engaging with other people's content is also um, where a majority of your engagement comes from. So if I were to um, like put a, a, heart emo uh, a heart emoji, and then comment um, something and put a, a, a GIF. Next time that person uh, sees one of my content, they're almost sure to uh, engage with it. So it really engaging with other people post is one of um, the best things to do for your business because it really brings in a lot of the, um, engagement besides sharing your content with groups. Um, but yeah, so the, um, besides, um, so, so whenever you find a post, instead of pressing this um, blue like button, which you should never press and never touch in your life, um, you should put the, you should either do uh, one of these five, or no, six, one of these six. Um, these will give you the like better um, Facebook algorithm points. Um, uh, the same as this, um, if you were to put uh, a GIF instead of just a regular, um, like emoji or a little text, he needs a snowboard um, emoji. I put, that looks awesome, Rachel, and I tagged her. Um, you can only tag people whenever you're friends with them. So if you're not friends with them, you can't tag them. But if you are friends with them, tag them because they'll get a notification and they're like almost 100% likely gonna respond to you. Um, Michael? So think, yes. Actually, you can tag someone who you're not uh, friends with. Yeah, uh, we can go over that another time, but that's something I just learned recently. Oh, you did? You, yeah, you, you I have look, no idea. You use the ampersign. Mm. Oh, yeah. I didn't you think know, about the, that. The, but that's only as long as your name isn't something like like John Smith. Oh, yeah. So you know, because then there's going to be so many people that you'll probably never find them. Mm-hmm. Let me try that actually. I think I'll try it right now. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, it does work. All right. Um, scratch what I said. You can do that. Um, if it's a, some other um, person uh, that you're not friends with, you can. You just have to press the at button and then type their name and you should find them. Um, I had no idea. I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, tagging them is very important. It'll get a notification. Um, well, they'll get a notification and they'll likely respond to you. And, uh, and along with a uh, GIF, GIF also give a lot more awareness whenever you're engaging with posts um, instead of some little text and a little emoji.